welcome back for another lesson. First of all, congratulations to all our students and subscribers who passed the Grade 8 Music Theory exam. And I'm happy to hear that most of them would like to continue pursue the AMAS DTL Diploma Music Theory exam. I've decided to make a series of tutorials to teach you how to work out the answer from question 1 to 5 for AMAS DTL Diploma exam under the Trinity exam board. In the past, I have um, published a video that teaching you how to complete the question 3, the romantic uh, piano music. And first of all, successfully passing the AMAS DTL exam is a significant achievement and is recognized as a mark of excellence in the field of music theory. So I would like to encourage you to continue with this diploma music theory exam after your grade theory. Today's topic is about four part, four part writing of Bach Koval. Please watch until the end of this video as I want you to take a screenshot of important pointers along this video because I'm going to give important pointers and summary for Bach's Koval um, and four part writing. Before I start, kindly do me a favor to subscribe and click like so that my channel can continue to get sponsored by YouTube and that will encourage me to publish more free lessons in the future. If you have already done so, please help to share this video with your friends who can benefit from it. First of all, let me explain what Bach Choral is. A Bach Choral is a type of four parts harmony based on a Lutheran theme developed and perfected by the composer Johann Sebastian Bach during the Baroque period in the 17th, 18th century. Bach Choral typically consists of four voices, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, and each voice is assigned its own unique melody line. This melody moves in a way that creates harmonies and chord progression, forming a rich and complex sound. Bach composed hundreds of chorales and they were often used as a part of church services where they were sung by a choir and congregation. Bach chorales were renowned for their um, intricate counterpoint and harmony and they have since become a staple of Western classical music. Before going to look at the questions, please make a screenshot of the important rules for writing Bach Choral. So, th there are a few uh, important things that you need to aware that to pre prepare for this question with confidence, candidates should be fluent in the use of diatonic harmony, including the use of dominant and diminished seven chords, and should be able to modulate to closely related keys. They should also be skillful in the use of passing notes and suspension and in spacing parts for voices. Chromatic chords such as mitroidal and augmented six are not common in choral harmonization. But the use of both the secondary dominant and occasional uh, chromatic alteration of the subdominant are encountered. Equipped with these skills, the candidate should have no difficulties in tackling the choral uh, harmonization questions. So uh, an example of this uh, choral uh, will be given and I'm going to teach you step by step on how to work out uh, the answer. Okay, so uh, please stay at the, until the end of this video because along the, this video I'm going to give you pointer summaries uh, and you can make the screenshots on uh, the important information. Okay, without further ado, Let's start the lesson now. Thank you for watching. Hi, thank you for coming back for this lesson. Um, this is the Bach Choral in 2018A. Okay, tested in 2018A, uh, paper A, 2018. So first of all, you need to identify uh, what is the key. So from beginning, you can see there's one sharp and it starts with G, G, B, D. So apparently this is in G major. So um, in order to help you to quickly find the chords, I list out all the chords uh, in G major key. So first of all, uh, this is the beginning of the music. So we can always start with tonic chord, which is chord one. And because chord one consists of B, so we can use chord one over here. And next one is for chord five. I will like to use chord five because chord five 
consists of the node D. And there are two Ds over here. So as you know, for four parts writing, when the two nodes are repeated and one, one is strong and the two repeated node, one is falling on strong weak, and another is on weak weak. So in this case, you can actually repeat the chord by using five root position and five first inversion. Next uh, is B, C, D. So after six, I prefer to progress to chord six because chord six consists of the note B. So this C is a passing note. So over here, I use chord six and then this one is chord one. And next, I would like to have two chords over here because this note holds for two counts. So usually in Bach Chorale, at the end of this phrase, we need to have a, a cadence. So in order to create a cadence and there's a long note, usually we will have 2B, okay? Uh, we can use 2B because 2B consists of C. And then after 2B, uh, we can go to 5-7 uh, because 5-7 is D, F, A, C. Again, both chords can share the C. So uh, I, will, I won't encourage you to just put 5 to 1, okay? Because usually Bach will have two chords that share by one note. Okay, so this is the uh, box uh, musical style. So I will use chord 2B, 5C, uh, 5, 7, sorry, it's 2B, 5, 7. And then after that, end with uh, chord 1. And let's continue to um, draft all the chord progression first before putting in the notes. So when this is a new phrase, okay, we can start with chord 1 again. Okay, because one is tonic, meaning starting from home. Tonic is a home. Okay, starting from home again. And as you progress here, uh, there is a C. So uh, chord four, I will use chord four because chord four consists of the note C. So I put here four. Next, we'll see a very interesting skill-like passage over here. Okay, so it's in G major, B, A, G is three, two, and one. Okay, so when you have three, two, one, uh, um, if you study grade six music theory, you know that when the melody move step by step, uh, mi, re, do, like three, two, one, in this stepwise movement, you can actually answer with do, re, mi, one, two, three. Okay, meaning we can use a passing six four over here. Okay, so if you don't know what is passing six four, uh, next time we can um, we can uh create a video that talks about passing 6-4. So if you want to know uh, more detail about passing 6-4 chord progressions, uh, please leave your comments below. So if I think uh, many people need this uh, information, I will create another video that talking about passing 6-4, okay? So uh, you need to have these country motions, okay, 3, 2, 1, and then 1, 2, 3. B, A, G. G A B. This country motion uh, movement is very important. Uh, a very important knowledge for Bach Chorale. And the chord progression for passing six four will be one, five C and one B. Okay, because what G B B when you have chord one root position, the G is at the base. Okay, and then um, let me erase this first. And then we have five C. This B F A A. Okay. For second version, we double the uh, fifth note. So this one, the uh, second version, so A is in the bass. So one B is G, B, D. Okay, so B is in the bass. So by looking at this, you know um, uh, this is a important progression that you must use okay, when you have three, two, one movement in the soprano line. Next, um, I will use... Uh, so over here is only chord one. So I wouldn't use chord one again, okay? Because uh, you cannot repeat the chord one with weak and strong beat, okay? So this chord one is at the weak beat. Next chord one is on the strong beat. So when you want to repeat the two chords, they are the same. You cannot have weak to strong beat. Okay? So in that case, I will use uh, 3B instead because 3B uh, has the note B as B, okay? So after three B, I will go to five. I'll go to one. Okay. Then uh, next one, I would you need to because they are giving you all this rhythm, so you need to create your own melody. So in terms of melody, uh, you need to make it look more interesting. Okay. So especially the soprano part. So I would uh roughly draft up a melody shape that I want. Then after that, I will 
write the melody accordingly. Um, so as you know, uh, for bar chorale, you need to have at least one modulation in this question. So instead, in terms of modulation, I would decide to you can decide you want to moderate to dominant key or subdominant key. So that's the most basic uh, related uh, related key that you can moderate to. So over here, I prefer to use C major, moderate to C major before going back to the tonic. Okay, so for C major, I use a uh, red color. Okay, the so after this, I start with chord four, and then. Uh, over here, I want to create another uh, passing six four. C D C. Okay, because passing six four is very commonly used in back chorale. Okay, it moves like the three two one. So E D C. So left hand can be C D E. Later on, we can fill in the mid, the rest of the note. And you know that passing six four, the chord progression one B. 5C is the specific chord progression for passing 6 4, okay? Three, two, one. Then after that, let's continue. Okay, so after this modulation, I decided to go back to tonic key, which is a G major. Okay. So for modulation, you need to find a pivot chord. Okay, so let's say this is a chord one of C major, which is a C E G, and so happened that in G major, this C E G chord uh, is also a major chord. Okay, so C E G is a major chord. So the pivot chord that you use must be the same type of chord you have for the new key. So in C major, C E G is a major chord. C E G. Then uh, when you modulate the new key, it need to be a uh, major chord also. So happen that in G major, C, E, G is also a major chord. Okay, it's a major sounding chord. Okay, so it can be used as a pivot. Okay, so over here I write a pivot chord. This two is a pivot. Okay. So from here, we can move, go back to a G major. Let's continue to write the melody. So after 3, 2, 1, passing 6, 4, uh then I decide to have D C B okay and when I write a melody I like them to move step by step um closely related to each other and over here I would like to add an uh, interesting chord which is a German six chord over here because sometimes bugs also use a German six chord. Okay, so I will put a B, B flat, A. Okay, so in, in G major, the German 6 chord uh, consists of a B flat. Okay, so if you don't know what is German 6 chord, you can um, go to my other video that talk about German 6. Okay, I did create, I created a video that talked about a German 6 chord, uh, operated 6 chord. Okay, uh, I'll put it under the, in the, the link under this video and you can take a look. Okay. So German six, then after that I would like to have uh five and one to end this music. Okay, so over here is B, so chord six can be used here. And then over here I can use chord one because uh chord one is a note B. Okay, so by doing this, uh we can uh first step uh write out all the chords that we want to use, then after that you can um Create the notes. So chord one is G D D. Okay, so I decided to repeat the G G B D. Okay. Okay, so far it's quite smooth. And make sure you don't have consecutive fifth and eight. Okay, how to know whether you have consecutive fifth and eight? So you check from here to here is an eight. Okay, just make sure the next two don't have uh it's not an eight. Okay, if this is a Eight apart, this one also eight apart, then it's consecutive. But over here, I don't have this problem. Okay, so I can move on to check the rest of the part. So this is how you check. Okay, so from here to here is third. So avoid consecutive, okay, uh, fifth and eighth uh, interval. Okay, so over here, here to here, don't have. Eight, fifth or eight, so it won't have any problem. So 
So C to G is a fifth. So if this is a fifth, make sure uh, your base and sopranos is a fifth. Make sure here G to B is not a fifth. So over here G to V is a third. Okay, so uh, no problem. Now let's continue. Okay, five. Call five D F A. So I put D. D. Okay, so here D D. Uh, F and A. Let's continue. Next one is 5B. 5B meaning D, F, A. Then the F is at the base. D, uh, D. Then base is F. Then channel is A. Okay, cut 6. Uh, for cut 6 is E, G, B. So if it's E, E, G and B. Okay, so so far I don't see any consecutive B or A okay, between the parts. Okay, next one is G, G, B, D. So we have a G, G, B, D. Okay, so G, G, B, and D. Okay, now you can uh, start to check the consecutive. So um, let me show you uh, co what does consecutive mean. So from here, if you have G at the base, uh, G, or oh, we have E at the base. Sorry, that base note here is E. And you have also auto an E. So over here, you have a G at the base. And auto also have a G. Okay, so this is consecutive. Okay, although this is more than octave, but both of them are still considered consecutive eight. So in this case, what you can do to avoid this consecutive is to change the inversion to for one of the chords. Okay, let's say uh for chord six, instead of six, uh, maybe we can try to change to first inversion, which is the G at the base. Okay, so E. As you know, chord 6 is a minor chord. So minor chord is, tends to be gentle and more flexible. So we can double the middle note, G, G, B. So by doing this, uh, we avoid the consecutive A. Okay? So this is a good method to avoid the consecutive A. So next chord is 2B. So 2B is A, C, C, E. Okay. A, C, C and E. Okay, next one is D, F, A, C. So D, F, A, C. So instead of F being a crotchet, D, F, A, C all being crotchet, uh, sometimes Bach will do this. Okay, to make the harmony the music look more interesting. Okay, for ending, come to chord five. Okay, so uh chord one, the ending is chord one, which is a home already. So chord one, I will put a G G B D. Okay, so uh that's all for this part. Next um chord one if we ever use a G G B D okay followed by okay please help me to check whether I have consecutive fifth or eight if I make a mistake like that please leave a comment uh please remind me in the comment box okay let's continue next chord is a C C E G so C C E, G, and then we come to this uh, pass 6, 6, 4. So this is 3, 2, 1, country motion. So over here, I put 1, 2, 3. Then in between, uh, I can have D. Okay, G, G, B, D. So I put D and G. G, G, B, D. Next one is D, F, A, A. 
B F A A. Then after that, G B B. G G B B. Okay, so the basic notes are done. Next, uh, C, uh, G A B D F. This is B D F. So this D is over here. F. Okay, D. So over here I have B D D F. The next one is B D F A. D. D. F. A. Okay, the next one is GGBB. Okay, so please take note uh, when we come to this uh, cadence point, the uh, bar will always want the chord one, every note, all notes to be presented uh, at this ending point of the phrase. So, uh, we need to resolve the leading note to tonic. But over here, the leading note, if it resolves to tonic, then uh, it will be too many G, 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 B. Okay, so but one uh two harmony to be written here. So uh in all, in, instead of seven go to one, the seven can also resolve to uh to fifth note of the key, which is a D. So that you can have a full harmony over here. Okay, the same goes for this one, uh for G major. The leading note is F. Okay, the leading note is F. So but you already have two G's over here. Okay, but uh, Bart will not repeat the G three times, okay, because he wants to have full harmony. So instead of leading note go to the tonic, like uh, what we usually do, seven can also go to third note of the key, G, G, B, D. So this is the uh, very important rules that you want to take note. So seven go to uh, three. Okay, next one, uh, chord four in C major. So C major, I will use a uh, red color. Okay, so please remember to put a uh, natural for the F. Okay, so F F A C, F F A C. Then the next chord is a C C E G. Okay, the next chord is a uh, B. G B B B. So repeat the fifth note. Then the last chord is C C E G. So th this one is leading note. Uh, can go to tonic C C E G. Okay, same for uh, one five C one B just now. Uh, the leading note can go to tonic. Okay, so all this need to be settled. Okay. Um. So this is what you will see in part six six four. Okay. One of the part will play the same note, and then another part will. Okay, there is the effectiveness of using R664. Tonic goes to leading note and tonic. Okay, so passing six six four. Okay. So here another passing six four. You'll see this very frequently in Bach's choral. Uh, next uh, G major, chord one is G B D. So we can put G. Uh, G, B, D. Next, chord 6 is C, G, D. So this is a E, E, G, B. Then, for German 6 in the G major, uh, let's build the chord first, okay? As you know, German 6, uh, the step 1 is to look for the uh, minor 6 interval, which is a E flat and C sharp, okay? And for G major, German 6, we will start with the minor 6, which is E flat, C sharp, 
and then followed by a major third, it is a G and B flat. Okay, so this B flat mark that this is a German six chord. So let's see this German six chord. So the B flat is already done. Okay, so the bass note I can put uh nearest you can put is a C sharp. Let's try this arrangement. Uh, and then C sharp can follow by G. And then the E flat. And this German C chord needs to resolve. Okay, so C sharp uh, need to resolve to D. Okay, so G can go to F, the nearest. So B flat, the flatter note must fall down by the semitones, F to A. And then E flat, you can fall down to D. Okay. The last chord is uh, GBD. Okay, come to the end really. So leading note, uh, in uh, the bass note is a G and G. Okay, so over here I end with two to one. Uh, for soprano part, it gives you a more satisfying ending. And then G G. So the uh, also you can put B. And then um, tenor, I, can, I, I put B because F cannot go to G. You already have too many G if you put a G for tenor. So it's going to have three Gs. Okay, but want to have a full ending. So instead of G, the leading note here resolve to uh, D to 5. So G G B D. Okay. So after finishing the basic uh chords, let's add in the decoration. Okay, so Bach will always want to have decoration for his four parts choral writing. Okay, so add in the passing note of the note wherever you can. Okay, it can be accented or unaccented passing note. So let's spin the basic one first. So between this D and F. I can use E. Okay, e, the passing note, I use a green color. Passing note and auxiliary note, the decoration, I use green color. Okay, so you know they are decoration. So G to B, I can use A. So please take note, make sure uh, when you add, after adding this passing note, you won't have consecutive. Like this A to E is a fifth. So you need to take note, make sure the next one is not a fifth. Okay. So over here, we don't have consecutive fifth after adding the passing note. So this A can be used here. And also this A to C is a third. Okay, when the passing note or auxiliary note, the two decorations form third or sixth. That is the best interval uh, that sound good in your four parts writing, okay? So Bob like to use that interval. Mm. And after that, uh, over here between B and D, two repeated notes, I can add a C. Okay, so I don't see any consecutive. So here another auxiliary note. Okay. So later on at the uh, last the here between B and G, I can add another passing note. And just nice this form a third. Okay, so this is a good interval to add decorations. Okay. So this is E. Between E and C, I can add a passing note, B, C. So over here, okay, I, just now I say this is a better version, okay? So where I show two versions, okay? Apparently, this one is better, okay? So some students will put just five, one, just one chord for this and one chord for this. What if you can only have uh, two chords at the end? Okay, so this is another example that I want to show you. You can add some decoration D C D. Okay, okay beside passing note and uh, auxiliary note, but also like to add in uh, suspension.
okay, let me erase all this so that it looks more uh, neat. Okay, if you want to make a screenshot, you can uh, rewind the video. Okay, next, we can add, after adding passing note and auxiliary note, we can add the suspension because Mark likes to add suspension. So look for the note that move one step down. For instance, over here, B to A is moving one step down. So in order to uh, make a suspension to create a dissonant sound, you can delay this A to come later, and this B can tie over. Okay, the purpose is to create a dissonant sound at this point. Okay, so we add the B as suspension. Um, beside here, you can also see uh, the next line, the G to F. Over here, there's a it's falling by step. So this F, I will delay. Okay, let me share something with you. So this G is over here. Uh, okay, so when in the suspension, suspension resolve here, try to avoid adding another uh, passing note because over here, this is where the chords resolve, okay? The chord this located like this, it should resolve at this point. So you cannot have any other non-chord note. Otherwise, the suspension, suspended note will not get uh, resolved. So instead of putting there, I change my oxygen over here. Okay, so this is important. Okay, please make sure when these suspended note, uh, the suspension resolve, you don't have any other uh, decoration over here. Okay, now let's continue. Uh, look for sus places that can put suspension. Okay, so we see here is another falling of uh, notes. Okay, over here you cannot add because they don't allow you to change the rhythm. You can only put crutches. So we, I don't add in a soprano, but I can add a tenor. Okay, so tenor part, when you add suspension, delay the B. Okay. And then the C is a suspended note. Okay, so this is suspension you can add. Okay, so please help me to check whether I have any consecutive fifth or eighth. Okay, you have already passed three exam or with six, seven, eight exam. You should be able to spot the fifth, consecutive fifth and eighth. Uh, the kind of mistake. Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't see any other accidental from missing. So I already uh insert the uh accidentals for modulation. Okay, so that's all uh for this and. Uh, please stay a little, a few minutes more because I'm going to share the summary with you and now. Uh, the summary to do a box corral. So here are some of the rules to keep in mind when writing a box corral composition in soprano, alto, tenor, and bass format. Okay, so each voice, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass should be independent and have a clear melodic line. Okay. The harmony should be based on the chord progression of the key of the chorale. Okay, so the melody should be primary stepwise with occasional leaps. Okay, the bass line should move primarily in stepwise motion and should outline the harmonic progression. The upper and tenor lines should move in a similar fashion um, to the melody and should not cross over or clash with each other. Okay, so for this one, meaning um all four parts should have its own melodic line move independently. Okay, so and then the uh, tenor cannot, they cannot cross or overlap, meaning the tenor cannot go higher than auto, auto cannot go lower than tenor. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, chord should be spaced in a way that allow each voice to have a clear and independent uh, melodic line. Okay, avoid parallel fifth and octave between any two voices. So this is very important, okay? Uh, avoid large jump or leaps in the melody, which can disrupt the harmonic progression. Okay, so you notice just now when I do the four-part writing, okay, uh, I try to keep close to each other, okay? The composition should be in four-parts harmony, 
with each voice contributing to the overall sound of the piece. Okay, so the piece should end with a perfect cadence to create a sense of resolution. So beside uh, seven to one, we can oh, oh, normally we seven go to one, but in order to um, end with the tonic full chords, we can end with seven, resolve to fifth note, or leading note, resolve to third note. Okay, um, on top of that, we can add some decorations. We can add a passing note, uh, auxiliary note, and uh, suspension. These three are the most frequently used uh, by Bach. Of course, uh, you can also add subsidiary harmony note. These are the topics that you learn in grade 7. Okay, if you want to know more details into all these topics, you can um, write in the comment box and I will try to create one in future. So, um, on top of that, uh, please check paragraph 5 and 8 after adding all these uh, decorations. Okay, so these are some of the basic rules. Okay, these are just basic rules to keep in mind when writing a bar choral composition in SATB format. Okay, so these are the rules that you need to follow SATB. So this guideline can help create a cohesive and harmonically pleasing piece of music. Okay, so uh, for counterpoint and harmonies. And they have since become a um, staple of Western classical music. Okay, so if, uh, until now, I think some choirs are singing them. So uh, I think these are the important points, uh, important pointers for writing uh, four parts uh, bark choral. So you can make a screenshot on all these important rules. Okay, starting from here, you can make a screenshot. Okay, you can make a screenshot for this part and then here. Okay, so eventually you still, after studying all these important rules and step-by-step -step, uh, guide on Mark Corral, you still need your teacher to mark your homework for you because there are many possibilities to complete this Mark Corral's answer. Okay, uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Thank you so much for uh, attending this lesson. Thank you. Bye-bye.